hoping that those who peer through will sense a stirring of recognition of something meaningful. I'm Linda Kidd, and I'm here with Sandy Jacobs in her studio, and Susan Vogel is doing our cinematography for us today. So Sandy, can you tell me a little bit about your painting journey? How did you start? Well, <laughs> I, it took um, um, quite some time for me to actually um, realize I maybe might be an artist. <laughs> it was about 20 years ago um, I decided to go take some night classes at the um, local community college, at Moore Park College, uh -huh. in drawing and composition. And what prompted that was I had gone to some painting classes at the Park and Rec. They were so much fun. You go in and you come away six weeks later with a painting that you made and you didn't even know you could do that. Everybody who came out of the class was like, I didn't know I could do that. Um, but you got to play with the paint. It was acrylic paint. You got to splash it around a canvas with a brush. And you were basically copying either an existing painting or a photograph. Mm -hmm. um, and I had so much fun with that that I decided I'm going to go learn to draw so that I can paint whatever I want to. And that was the beginning, and I've never looked back. I've enjoyed it so much. It was a gift to myself to do what I really enjoy. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So how do you choose what you want to paint? What inspires you? Well, originally, I was inspired by um, Robert Bateman. He's a Canadian wildlife artist. I have a couple of his books. Um, and I love wildlife. I love animals anyway. Um, but I, I remember looking at his stuff kind of thinking, maybe I could do that. Maybe I, you know... Maybe I could, and then a light bulb went off. It's like, oh, I could learn how to do that. You can actually go to classes and learn what artists do to create their stuff. They just aren't born knowing it. <laughs> I'm a bit of a light bloomer, I admit. But, so that's what I started to do. And um, my first stuff was wildlife and nature. And that, that is my focus anyway. But and we can see some of these, Susan. So up there we have our gray wolves up on top. That piece is called Winterlude, and underneath that is, um, it's called Masters of Flight. I just love to watch pelicans fly because they are so skilled at flying. They're very awkward on the land, uh -huh. but in the air, they're so graceful. Those and are brown pelicans? Brown, yeah, yeah California kind of brown pelicans. Uh -huh. They're amazing. And so that and the elephants, which are over on this wall, and so, the elephants? So, yeah, the elephants and the wolves and the pelicans. Those are all mm. kind of my favorite um, wild oh animals. Oh my gosh, they give me goosebumps. Look and at those eyes. These, the... these guys, I just fell in love with them. I, I made a trip up to the Oakland Zoo to get my own uh, photographs of elephants because I wasn't going to Africa to do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I, sh I kept shooting film until I ran out of battery power on my camera. Oh. And I came home and I made these in pastel, and I just, I treasure them. I love them so much. So you worked solely in pastel? No, also oil paint. I But I started in acrylic because that was something you could basically teach yourself. It's water-soluble. You can get in there and play with it and see what happens. Um, but then I started taking classes most recently, which is like fast-forwarding fast forwarding a couple of um decades really, to um, oil paint. I went to see um, George Pagliotto at Westlake Academy of Art to learn how to paint in oil. Hmm. And because I that one I couldn't figure out for myself. It was too confusing yeah, with the solvents and the mediums wow. and everything. A lot of portrait work. Yeah, and so that's what I really am gravitating towards these days is people. I love people because, you know, everybody's unique and everybody's got their own qualities of, of beauty and, and interesting you know, mm -hmm. aspects to their personality, and I see that in everyone, and I want to celebrate that. I think it's um, something really beautiful, and now that I have actually learned, you know, kind of the basics of drawing and painting, and uh, I'm on a learning curve, I'm, you know, still learning, I probably will be learning all my life, um, but I think now that good I've, artists, yeah. if they don't keep changing and learning, it's not art anymore. Right. Yeah. It's just so much fun, and I also, after taking um, basically all the classes I could take at Moore Park in the evenings and weekends, um, that started me on figure drawing, mm -hmm. and I found a group here in Camarillo at Studio Channel Islands Art Center that meets to do figure drawing once a week, and I've been doing that for years, and that has wow. really helped because I really think that drawing from life or painting from life, either one, is a skill that really helps you... Um, work out the specific hand-eye coordination that artists need to 
create representational art, to get, to get that illusion of three dimensions um, on a two-dimensional surface, you yes. know, working with light and, and value. And Do you ever go to the sketchers at the... Uh, I have been. Mm -hmm. um, it, I didn't used to be able to go when I was working, but I retired, and now I could go there, but I, I'm in the habit of going on, on the uh, Tuesday evening classes uh -huh. over at uh, Studio Channel Islands. But I have been to People's Sketchers, too, and it's a wonderful opportunity. It's the same kind of setup. And it's, it's always something different, which is great. Mm -hmm. I remember talking to one artist who was in a different class um, in a different school, and they said, well, we have the same model every week. And I'm like, that's good, though. You know, we have different models. That's great. And they're, all, yeah. they're all pros. They all do really well at holding the pose and, and knowing what kind of poses artists are looking for. They're not just going to stand there like this. Uh -huh. They're going to give you a little twist, a little attitude, a little something mm -hmm. that you're looking for. And... Um, it's always a challenge, <laughs> but it's a good challenge. So tell us a little bit about the physicality of this studio. Was this a wall yeah. originally? Yeah, this was, <laughs> we, took, we took this out um, and put in this four foot pocket door. So when we need it to be two rooms, it can be. And we also put cork under the floor for, you know, a little oh, bit wow, easier standing. Yeah. When you're standing at the easel. And um, most of the time, this is how we use it. Um, so it's really practical. So you have two rooms and you've got your display area here. Yep, and I've got workspace there if I need it. I've got my little library here. And then in, in this room over here is where I have all my wonderful supplies. Neatly organized. <laughs> so it looks like you have your pastels in this room, is that right? So my understanding with pastels is that you really need to rip off the labels and break them. <laughs> now I still am... A bit of a hard time with that, but I know that this is how you need to use them, just like a paintbrush on the side, and you're making marks that are um, kind of intuitive, like you would with a paintbrush, and um, you're just judging the colors and the values by eye, and that takes some time and practice, and that's a big learning curve that I'm still on, but I do have them kind of arranged by, by hue Palette. and yeah. by mm -hmm. value, so I'm um, on that you know, progress, I'm making progress on that journey. Um, these are basically Rembrandts and they're mostly kind of a medium soft pastel, whereas these back here are Sennelier's, they're real soft. You would use those for your final touches at the end where you want that little bolt of color, you know. So when I first started with pastels, everything turned brown. Oh, I didn't. You were layering over. Yes, I didn't know you couldn't do that, and it was so messy. <laughs> That's yeah. what happened with me with oil years ago. I was really? like, How do you do this? <laughs> Softish and soft est, most soft, and then these are the hard ones over here, which you might start your painting with, just to get in your, um, you know, your landmarks and stuff, and where you want everything to go. And then for like finishing touches, like eyelashes on elephants, you might want just a little, little. <laughs> Sharply uh, sharpened pencil. And so is that pastel or that is that colored pencil? No, these are pastel pencils. Wow. Yeah, they're um, Conte's, mm -hmm. Conte of Paris, and um, they're wonderful to work with. They're kind of soft, and I take them sometimes to uh, figure drawing too and just work with them there. So these were, um, one of the things I did at Westlake Academy of Art, it's a, a master copy. Um, we did s several of these because it's a good way of Learning how another artist, this is Dan Gerhardt's work, um, how they solved the problems that they ran into, the same problems I run into when making a portrait. Mm -hmm. And so in copying, you're going, oh, he put cool color in there and warm color there and desaturated, you know, and more saturated color there. Um, this is a guy named Eric Carl Johnson. I love this piece. Mm -hmm. It's called Jesse, and I think he won an award with Oil um, Painters of America last year. And so I wanted to work on that one and copy that one too. Now, is that an oil or? Yeah, that's, that's oil. oil. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so that was just a little exercise that's uh, very useful and very instructive. Yeah, it's easier to copy a painting than it is a paint from a photograph. It is because somebody's already worked out the strokes and everything and yes. figured out. And also, I noticed, and that's one thing about the life drawing, if you do go to work from a photograph, like this one was um, a photograph, and that one was too which that's my favorite, by the way, which is my most recent. Mm -hmm. But having um, done some life drawing, it helps you interpret the photograph better than just copying a photograph, especially when it comes to contours and, and 
And the colors and the shadows. Yes, yes. Everything definitely. goes black from a photograph, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Inspiration. I had this for a long time. I bought it. Um, it was done by a artist named Judy Trusty. She was a Southern California artist, and I just fell in love with the piece, and it is my inspiration. So it keeps guiding me forward, you know, uh -huh. in, in my efforts. So it has to be part of my studio. So is this how you start? Exactly. Over here is my oil setup, and I was just getting started with this gentleman here. Um, and I've kind of, at this point, I've just kind of put in some light lines that are just a mixture of um, transparent red oxide and ultramarine blue. And I think I'm going to let that dry a little bit before I start doing skin tones on that. But it just kind of gives me a road map um, of where where I'm going. And it's kind of an estimate at this point. I can always make corrections on it. But it's just a way of getting started. Mm -hmm. And before I did that, I toned the paper and let that dry. Hold on a minute. I got another message here with Select Network. Okay. We don't need uh, that. But I don't know how to. Okay. All right. Okay. Can you show us your palette here? Yeah. Wait, wait a second. Start that again. Aren't we done? Aren't we still going? No. Okay. We are. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> so are we going? Yeah. We oh, are. okay. So, yeah. Here's my palette, and um, this is kind of like typically what I use for portraits. Although I do vary it from time to time. And here, here are the same paints all laid out, um, starting with like whites. This uh, radiant blue I use in with the whites. The yellows, the reds, I have a warm, cool red, um, transparent red oxide I use a lot, which I need to <laughs> learn how to balance it out. Um, raw umber, got three different blues, ultramarine, cobalt, and cerulean, cerulean, and um, viridian green, and then two olive greens because they're both different, different brands. Um, this one's a lot lighter, this one's a lot darker, and I use them both, I love them both, it's a great color. Is that and dioxazine? This is manganese violet, oh. and so that's what's, what's all laid out here. Um, so that's kind of where I start with um, with portraiture, with skin tones, which is an ongoing lesson. That's just, <laughs> you know, I'm still working on skin tones, but um, I, I, you know, I'm learning as I go. So what inspires you? People. Yeah. Um, this gentleman, for example, and I should have asked his name. I don't even know his name. I, sh I should... I should tell you, I should back up a step or two and say that um, what I really wanted to do is just paint ordinary people, just people you meet and people that you come in contact with through any kind of, you know, just, just different casual things. And um, at first I was really shy about that. So the first one I asked was my neighbor, somebody uh -huh. I already knew. And uh -huh. she said, sure, fine. So I went to her house, I, I sketched her a little bit, I took some pictures, I came home and I made the portrait. And it was really cute because... Um, she says, well, that's really nice. Let me give you some photos of me when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate to that. Uh, yes. like, okay. Uh, but then um, the next one I did was actually an art model, so that was okay. I just got so lucky because uh, I went to figure drawing one night, and it was a long pose, long pose night where she'll hold the same pose maybe two or three times at 20-minute settings or 25. So I was able to, because I'm a slow drawer, a slow worker, um, I was able to actually take the oil paints and get a, a you know a line block in done in that time and then come home and she just said it's okay if you take a picture and so I was able to finish it from the oh, picture fantastic. that worked out great and so I thought okay I want to do more of that just just real people so that's where the um, the most recent one the one I call light from within mm -hmm. okay so she is a lady who works at the local bagel shop and she has such a beautiful personality and she treats every person she meets like they're special mm -hmm. like they matter like mm -hmm. like she's happy to see them and I love that quality mm -hmm. in people I love I, because I really think it matters how we treat one another mm -hmm. I think it really matters and so I wanted to paint her because of that special quality and so I had to kind of like work up the courage. It took me weeks to, to <laughs> finally just introduce myself, even though she kind of knew me. And I say, oh, I'm an artist. I, I'd love to paint you. Would you. Here's my card. Look at my website. You know, mm -hmm. give, give me a call. And she did. And so it, it turned out it has a beautiful, that story has a beautiful ending, which is that painting. And now I have a new friend as well. Oh, so, that's lovely. <laughs> yeah. That's so this gentleman is the next one in that series of real people. <laughs> How do you um, decide on composition and design? 
Well, with portraits, it's where do you want the focal point, which is usually the eyes, it's usually one or the other. Mm -hmm. um, that makes it kind of easy. Um, and then it's where's the focal point, or as one of my art teachers used to call it, the star of the show. What part of your painting is the star of the show? Uh -huh. And then from there, it's like where, how do you want to lead the eye through the painting to mm -hmm. that focal point, mm -hmm. and maybe away and around the back, you know? And so that's kind of how I work it out. And I'm, that's another thing I'm still working on, but with portraits, it's kind of like you have a heads up. It's like that's what you, you know you, you need to do. It's not going to be his shirt sure collar that's for sure you yeah. know that's a that's a very nice element because when i asked him if he would pose for me he straightened up his shirt <laughs> <laughs> it's a very that's dignified great. look you know that's, cool. that's what i love about yeah. it so that's what inspires me where do you show your work well um <laughs> right now um life from within is over at that's a print on the wall actually uh -huh. the original is over at the westlake village art guild um jury show which is coming down tomorrow mm -hmm. this is june as we speak um, uh, I, that's mostly it. I've been in some shows. I did have um, one solo show at like the Gardens of the World. I don't know if you're familiar with yeah, that. Yes, in Thousand Oaks. Oaks. Yeah. Um, and that was about a year and a half after I retired and I had all my paintings were like um, floral and landscape and hummingbirds. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, like hummingbirds and flowers and you know little landscapes and stuff like that because they didn't want any people pictures at that time they uh -huh. just wanted like you know garden like, like garden yeah, yeah. Right. so that was a real thrill oh, um, yeah. but yeah that's so i'm still working out to as far as you know any other types of showing i'm open to it it's just i'm just you know working up towards that i do have a website uh-huh what is your website it's sandyjacobsart.com that's easy <laughs> yeah <laughs> and what are your goals for your work this year what I'd like to do is continue with the figure work. I really love it, although I never would turn down a chance to do a wolf or an elephant or, or, or even maybe a squirrel. We get some really cute squirrels out here in the tree. But anyway, um, I really want to do more figure work and and probably work in uh, multi-figure pieces with, with oh, kind of a narrative to uh -huh. the piece. And, and also, and, and Susan, you'll be able to relate to this, I'm sure, is to introduce abstract elements into it as mm -hmm. well, expressionistic, you know, sort of um, vibe or, you know, elements to the piece. So it's not just simply a formal portrait. That doesn't interest me at all. Mm -hmm. But it's like it's a, a living thing going on, you know. So that's kind of where I'm at. I'm thinking about Ooh. more multi-figure pieces. That's and quite a challenge you're setting for yourself. Yeah, because I don't quite know how to get there yet, but... Yeah, it's fun to learn. <laughs> I'm sure you'll find out. <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like to tell us about? Um, well, I can't think of anything, actually. <laughs> I'm just, uh, it's been a wonderful journey, and I'm so glad I made that decision back back when I did. I, I When I first went to that class, it was standing room only, and I thought I should go home and leave this to the, the college age uh -huh. kids, you know. And, but I didn't, and I'm so glad I didn't. <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing your studio with us. It's gorgeous. Thank and you for coming. And also your journey. Yes. Oh, there is one thing I want to say. I yes. want to say thank you to you and to you, Susan, and to you, Linda, and to the Westlake Village Art Guild for this opportunity to share my story with the other guild members. Oh, good. Well, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. thank